But we welcome all of you to Friendship Baptist Church. We're here today to worship our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're here today because God um, first loved us, loves us uh, very much. I guess when, if, if, uh, when you die for someone, you, you love someone, right? And Jesus Christ died for us on the cross. And so uh, we love him back. And we can worship him because he loves us so very, very much. He's on the throne. You know, when he rose from the dead, uh, he's sitting on the throne. You, if, if you look in uh, the book of Revelation, written after his resurrection, uh, you know that he's sitting on his throne. And he comes out of the throne, and he stands at the side of the Father, and then he takes on his human role as high priest, and he intercedes for us. He's the high priest. So uh, he loves us so much, and he's also our human high priest. He's fully God, and he's fully man. But he actually sits on the throne. I remember that being a debate when I was in seminary. Well, it wasn't really a debate, but the professor kind of opposed it to us, you know. Uh, and do you realize, one day when you look at the throne of God, there's going to be a human body up there. Because Jesus Christ rose bodily. He rose bodily. And he's one essence with the Father. That's kind of amazing, isn't it? Now, if God loves us so much, I mean, he, he, he didn't do that for the angels. He did that for us. The angels aren't jealous. They're, 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 but an angel who's still in heaven, two-thirds of them are, they have never sinned. You and I, I hate to say it, but we sin a lot. And yet... God loved us so much, he gave us a Savior, an intercessor, he died for us, gave us grace, grace, <coughs> grace, greatest gift God could ever give. That means he forgives us. He, he, he looks down from heaven, he does not see our sin. Now we do have to come to him, we have to confess our sins, repent of our sins, and live for him. That's what he expects. But he is the greatest God. And so. We're so, he is the only God, but he, he is the, he is the uh, uh, and that's what the, the, really the theme today of our sermon. I'm going to be in Deuteronomy chapter 8, and the, and the theme really is, have we forgotten God? Have we forgotten God? So even though some of you didn't hear what I just said a few minutes ago, um, that's the question, really, uh, today. So, um, have we forgotten God? Has America forgotten God? As individuals, okay, as individuals, have we forgotten God? Have we forgotten who He is? So I'll stand for the reading of God's holy word. All right. Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse one: All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do. You may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Amen. Would you, like, would you um, mention, uh, mention Baptist? Yes. Yes, we... Um, well, I'm going to tell everybody that I'll pray. Uh, Gladys suffered a fall. She, you know, praise the Lord, she didn't break anything, but she's badly bruised. So, so there was that, and then also uh, Blanche Hedgepeth suffered a mini stroke. So we we'll want to pray for, for both of them. Uh, I'll, I'll include them in, in the prayer here. But keep them in, keep them in your your prayers. So. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you so much for everyone who is here today. And Lord, for the message that Pastor Ken is about to bring to us. And Lord, I do ask that you will, will be with, with Gladys, the feeling, and be with, with Blanche. And Lord, please heal the both of them and bring them back to complete health. And I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother. You may be seated. Wonderful to see Daughter Tracy here today. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We've been praying for you too. And you have a good successful surgery. So praise the Lord. Now we want complete recovery and good quality of life. 
painful. No wonder. God is so good. He gives us those doctrines. They're, they're a blessing to us. <clears throat> we have to remember God in everything. And uh, that's, that, that's what, uh, what Moses said. 120 years old was telling the people to remember God. Remember God. If you want to be blessed, you want to be blessed. In Sunday school this morning, uh, the people were talking uh, about um, <clears throat> you know, God's word. And um, we're talking about all, the, all, the, uh, all the, 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 the fact that we have uh, many blemishes, you know, that we don't live up to uh, God's standard. Even Christians do not, do not live up to God's standard. It's always something in our lives where we, uh, you know, can do better. We need to not judge one another, but look at it ourselves and look at where we are and try uh, to do better. And, uh, and, and so how, how important that is. Uh, for us to remember, and Moses was coming to the, the the new generation. The old generation had not lived up to God's standard. The, the people that God had brought up with such great miracles and plagues that He had dropped on Egypt, you know, and and and, uh, and destroyed the Egyptian army and drowned them, and, and just did so much for them. Yet they did not live up to the standard that God wanted in the Promised Land, and so. Now, that generation had died in the wilderness. Forty years has gone by. The new generation is alive. And Deuteronomy now is, I mean, uh, Moses is talking in Deuteronomy 8, um, continuing the, to present to them how they could have a country uh, that would bring personal success and, of course, uh, national success to the people. It's very appropriate for us today, uh, during this time of, of election, uh, as we have to look at our own nation and our own generation and say, have we lived up to God's standard? Are we living up to God's standard? Uh, are we where God wants us to be? If we want to be blessed as a nation, uh, where do we have to be? Now, of course, you all know that the buck stops here. It stops with, stops with you, with me, I, I. You know, we, we have to see, are we living up to God's standard? Because that's where it begins. But we have to also remember that... Um, that uh, right now the election is coming and we have some responsibilities as, uh, as God's people. I have dual citizenship. I have citizenship of, of, in the United States. I love that. I'm, I'm so glad I, that I was born an American and that God uh, gave that to me. My, my family, uh, whether I look on either side of my family, they came here for a better life. They came here to, um, to be able to teach their children about God. They, they came here uh, because there were uh, despotic leaders that were keeping them from being fulfilled as human beings. So they came to America to have that freedom. And I, I'm so glad uh, to be an American, willing to die to be an American. I, I hope I gave those values to my children. My son's in, in Kuwait right now, you know, with the eye. So I hope that you know, I think, that, I think he's got that, you know, to, 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 to love America. We also have to remember we have another citizenship, and that's a citizenship in heaven. And uh, they don't have to conflict, okay? God gave us this country. If, you're in a, if you live here in America, that's a, that's a gift God. Now, I got a letter from uh, the pastors of Pennsylvania. I, I belong to that, that organization, Conservative Pastors in America. It's, non-denominational. Of course, we're Southern Baptists, and, and we're, my denomination is saying the very same thing that the, the conservative pastors across Pennsylvania is saying. I got this letter, and um, it's, it's kind of funny how sermons work, you know. I, I get it ready, but then, uh, then God tells me what he really wants me to say. Four o'clock this morning, I woke up. That's right. And God's telling me what to write, you know, and what to say. And, and a lot of times I'll just get up and go to my typewriter, and God, you know, might be in the middle of the night, you know, go i got something for you, you know, this is what I want you to say, you know, well, um, and, and, I, and I'm giving that to you, but also trying to, but I also uh, uh, got this, this, this nice letter from conservative pastors of, of America, American Pastors Network, it goes all across America, really, and um, John Adams, and this is what they say, John Adams, American second president, once said, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. Now, I've said that 
many different ways. That the, that the founders of America meant for this country to be a, country, a Christian nation. And, and if we do not have responsible citizenship, you can't have freedom. You have to have a king. You have to have a despot. You have to have a, a strong, strong leader telling you what you have to do. You want to be free, you have to be responsible. That's what John Adams, a second president, of course, uh, had to say. Um, it is evident that morality is rapidly deteriorating in America today. It's been going on my whole adult, uh, adult adulthood. I've watched it with much grief. Pastoring, yelling and screaming didn't do any good. <laughs> you know. It gets so that when people now, when they want to get married, they'll, they'll, they'll say, this is the ceremony I want, and look at it, and God's not mentioned. They say, well, I can't do that ceremony. You're going to have God in. No purpose in marriage. No God in. But that's, that's, that's what they, that's where we are today. We've forgotten God as a nation. And are, are, we, are we there when we say, well, not the Christians. Christians are they haven't forgotten God. And yet, right now, there are 40 million Christians in America that do not claim to vote. That's, they, they can put any president in they want, any Senate, any, anybody. They, they don't claim to vote. That's, that's kind of a, an amazing thing, isn't it? 25 million registered Christian voters today, they don't claim to vote. And there's 15 million Christians who aren't even registered to vote. That's 40 million. That's, that's a, that, is, that is gross sin, in my opinion. I mean, we send our, our young men and women out to die for this country, for the freedoms. And we've had, you know, a million people have died for the freedoms here in America. And we can't even go down to the corner and vote. I mean, it's it's a it's disgraceful. Um, Satan, this letter says, would love for us to believe the lie that our faith should remain inside the four walls of the church. I remember when I read that, it was so interesting because I remember putting up crosses down in Maryland. I was a pastor in Maryland. Out in front of the churches, the church would put crosses up. And we're talking about pro-life. There was a big vote going on here on pro-life. So we, we built crosses and we put them up in front of the church. Some of the people in the church were mad at me. I would do such a thing. You know, why would you be so evident about what you believe? <laughs> you know? and, uh, and I put it on my sign, you know, and everything. Uh, and uh, so the so police came down and put a, put a ticket on, on our church bus because it said, um, it said Jesus saves on it. I forgot we left it out on the street. We should have got it off in the parking lot. And then they came and the, the pro-choice people came and put a put a um, a V in front of the church, you know, with their slogans on it. And then it took the lockout crosses. And then it said in the newspaper, because a lot of churches like that down here at that time, it said in the newspaper, those, those churches ought to, those pastors, those Christians should stay in the church with their faith. They shouldn't be out on the street with it. You know? I said, well, what is a prophet? What is the, what is the role of the church? Of course, Christians. We are, we, we are this nation. And, 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 and I found this, found this country for people like us. If, if Christians stand for biblical issues in the public square, our voice will be overwhelming. We would see tremendous victories of religious freedom, marriage, and family, and the sanctity of life. And Satan is scared to death. He hates you, and he's scared to death. He wants you to stay in here in these closed doors. Right now, they're closing doors. A lot of churches are closed up. Fear. Thomas Jefferson wrote, We do not have a government by the majority. We have government by the majority who participate. Mm -hmm. Not true. Do we have a place in that as Christians? Yes. I think we do. I think we do. And uh, I have to employ you.
to vote. True biblical solutions will be adopted and advanced if Christians will vote. If you don't vote, all can go away. We're going to lose our country. We're going to lose our country. Well, that's, that's from the conservative pastors of America crying out. I've never seen, uh, you know, the Grahams and all the people, uh, you know, getting you know, all the, the famous preachers and they speaking out like they are. They're speaking out. They have to speak out. It is a time. This election, it is a time when we have got to speak out. We, we, we um, Roe v. Wade could fall. So it's just going to go to the states to make, to make up their minds. But 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 that was never voted on by the public. You know you know where Roe v. Wade came from? It came from the courts. It came from the courts. And those who hate God, they want the courts to rule. Very important to them. Wow. I I think at stake. This is what I want. At stake. Abortion, Roe v. Wade, gender issues, our schools. Our schools are at, are at stake. What's being taught in the schools? Because I'm going to tell you something. They're spending your taxpayers' money, paying money to, to teach you uh, the, uh, racial, racial things and, and, and bad things and, and scaring our children and, 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 and making them into uh, something you don't want them to be. We, we need to be involved in our schools. A Supreme Court, that, that's, that's, a, that's really important. Your freedoms. If, if, we, if, we, if that court gets packed, and that was done, that was, tried, that was even tried by Whit Truman during, during the World War II. Pack the court, then, then what happens? Then, then, then really it becomes a one-party system. The court and the, and the party in power. And it'll stay that way forever, or for a long time. Uh, uh, Dinners. Uh, Isaiah 5.20, it, it, it says, um, evil called good, and God and good called evil. I've never saw so many evil people say, I'm a person of faith. And then, and then you look at their voting record, this is people in the government, and they're not people of faith. They're not even close. Give me a break. When, when I was... Ordained. I was ordained at a great big church in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. It was really the first Baptist Louisville. When election time came, you should have saw, you see that the politicians would come forward and rededicate their life. Because it was a televised, it was the biggest show in the morning. It was a televised TV show. I used to go up there and greet some of the people, they go forward and go pray with pray with Politicians, they wanted to be up front. Everybody wanted them to know that they were godly people. Vote for me, vote for me, you know? And they don't have to worry about it. The rest of the time, you don't see those people. Well, you know, you don't see them but those times. But there they are in church. Vote for me. I'm a godly person. We have got to use our brains and, and look at the people and look at how they love, that they live. Evil called good and good called evil in Isaiah 51.20. And Ezekiel 22.30 it, it, it says to stand together in the gap. Christians, stand together. This is not a denominational thing. This is a morality thing, a character thing. People who are believers, stand together in the gap and stop the evil one from destroying the greatest nation in the world. And that's just what's going to happen. Now, we go back to, Deut to Deuteronomy. Chapter 8. And we see the word. All the commandments which I commanded thee this day shall ye observe to do that you may live. If you're going to say you're a godly person, then know the Ten Commandments and live by them. Don't proclaim yourself a godly person and don't live by the Ten Commandments. Okay? And the first thing you do is you put God on the throne of your heart. That's the first thing. 
And then obeying, things like thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not lie. I always saw so many lies. And I'm not talking about any one party. I mean, they bounce them back and forth, don't they? They all exaggerate. Some of them out and out lie. We used to talk about, when I was a young preacher, and we were fighting for the right to life, we used to talk about pastor, the, the, the nom, denominational officials, who they would have two sermons. <laughs> That's all they needed. They didn't preach that much in the same place. And they preached one way in, one, in a conservative church, and believe they preached one way in a liberal church. And when they, and, and one, one guy, remember one, one, the comment that one guy was all said, he's all nice, I got my sermons mixed up, and I preached a, my liberal sermon in a conservative church. Or something like that. Oh man, I'm in trouble now. You know, it was so fake. You get politicians who say one thing to one audience and one thing to another audience. They can say one thing in New York and something else in Pennsylvania. But you know, we're, we're all about fossil fuels and all that. So they'll, 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 they just flip flop. Karen. Look at Karen. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall you observe to do, that you shall live. That means. That means live long lives. Be careful. Observe, obey, commit all the commandments of God. That's one of the things we learned in Sunday school today. That if you, you you can live a long life if if you are obedient to God. If you're not obedient to God, it actually brings sickness upon you. Anger, for one thing, the tension of anger. If you're, if you're an angry person, you can't forgive. That's going to shorten your life. You know that. Overeating that'll shorten your life. It, it, it it's a uh, you see, God knows all and sees all. God is greater than all. There's no limits. That's what he was telling me at 4 o'clock this morning. He was telling me, that, do we have, because my sermon is about, it is about, uh, have we forgotten God? Has America forgotten who God is? And, and, and I really think that we have. We forget that he, he's a loving God who cares about us. I, I was thinking about the first, as God was saying to me, did they really understand what Moses was trying to say? Did they understand, see, they didn't really understand eternal life as, as well as we do today. That, Jesus Christ really gave us a lot of information about, you know, in my father's house are many mansions, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, and where I am, there you may be also. He's telling them about heaven. This New Testament. The Old Testament people, they're worried about living, you know, life, having food to eat, safety. Will my children be torn away and made into made slaves? You know, they, they were worried about that kind of thing. And he's telling them that, that he'll, God is telling them that, uh, that if they will obey the commandments, that he'll give them long life. But you and I, in the New Testament, we know something more. We know that God gives us eternal life. That his blood that is shed on the cross not only heals our sicknesses, which that was very interesting. That's the Old Testament. They're worried about those kind of things. You know, they have all kinds of of diseases and they can't get rid of them and, and, and rashes and all kinds of pain and suffering that they're doing and they want God to heal them but, but we know that God not only will he heal us but he will give us eternal life with him forever and ever and ever it's so much better even for us that, that we fully understand we, uh, we have the Old and the New Testament how, how God will give us long life if we will, you know the average Southern Baptist I was told many years ago lives 10 years longer than the average person in America. Now why does he do that? Does that just happen? Okay, I became a Baptist. Okay, God, I'm a Baptist. I want, I get, I want 10 more years. <laughs> You're laughing. Because <laughs> that won't work. Give me 10 more. I'm a Baptist. I got that name. I'll put it right on my shirt if you want. 10 more years. No. you got to live for God. Obey Him. And then he'll take away the alcohol. He'll take away the drugs. He'll take away the gluttony. He'll, he'll, he'll take away the anger. You know? And, and, and you'll, you'll, you'll feel better. Amen. And you will be more healthy. And you will live longer. Now, that's some people, you know, unfortunately, for, you know, well, it's not 100%, but you probably live longer than you would have. You know, it might not be the the 70 that, that were promised might only be 60 or 50, but you'll live longer than, than you would have lived if you obey God. So obedience to God, it's not only, not only that, but you become a blessing to your family. 
You become a blessing to everybody that loves you. If you're a godly person, you're a blessing. If you're an ungodly person, nobody wants to be around you. You know what I mean? You know, because you're mean and you're cranky and you're, and, and, and you're just bad and sneaky. They don't want to be around you. But if, you, if you're a, a, a godly person, you are a blessing to everyone around you. And you will be loved. You will live longer. You will be happy. So character building in our lives. And, and, and we have to now think about what right now, think about character of the nation. What Moses is now telling them, he's telling them individually, you guys all, and, and boy, I'll tell you what, Joshua is going to take them to a regiment of rededication and, 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 uh, and rededication of all this new generation to the, to the people who finally Jesus Christ himself is going is to is appear to Joshua telling them he's the captain of their souls. But, so it's, it's, it's an individual thing. We need to rededicate our lives. But he's talking about the nation, the character of the nation. If, 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 if Israel will go in with the character of God, the obedience to God, Every place that, he, that, they, that Moses, well not Moses, he's not putting Joshua, every place that Joshua's foot will be put, they will have victory if the people are obedient. That's what we are in America. America, we can have the greatest, hey, there's no one man that can make America great again. I'm sorry. That's what you thought. It's going to take all of us to get Take all of us together. If you take that 40 million and plus another 40 million that do vote, and boy, we can change America. Charles Stanley, I heard him say this many years ago. I went to his church. I traveled for the sermon. He called all of the conservative pastors together years ago when I was a younger man. And I drove with a group of pastors and we went to hear Charles Stanley speak. He got to be the one that speak. It was at his church that he got to speak. And he said, as America goes, so will go, excuse me, he really was talking, he said, as a, as a Southern Baptist, we're the largest Protestant denomination, but really we'll have, to, we'll have to modify it. But as the Christians go, so will go the nation. We can tip this, 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 this nation any way we want to, we'll all vote. And he said, he said, but as a Southern Baptist go, so will go the nation. As the nation goes, so will go the world. In other words, America is the most influential country in the whole world. We are God's country. We are spiritual Israel. I really still believe that. Israel is Israel, and we're spiritual Israel. There are many Jews, by the way, living here almost, as there are in Israel. We are spiritual Israel. And we are born-again believers. There's a lot of us. The time that the child Stanley said it, there was a whole lot more of us. Now it's, it's dwindled a lot less. But it, as America goes, and, and as Christians go, as the Christians go, as if, if we'll get our feet under us, if we will uh, rededicate our lives, if we'll, if we'll serve the Lord together, and we will see God um, transform this country, and he'll bless it. If we just sit, 40 million people just sit and do not vote, we can see our country you don't think that that could happen? I don't even think that's a possibility that America could. Because I don't believe it could ever happen. You sit back, don't worry. What do you have? You could, could America. When I mean destroyed, I mean lose our, 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 our fervency, lose our, 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 our moral base. Our church, we'll watch the churches folding and, and closing all around us. What's going on now? Our children won't. Won't, won't love God, they won't get married, they'll just live together, there'll be, be sexual immorality, drug, a, a, a drug culture. And by the way, if you read in, in, in the book of, uh, of Revelation, uh, what it's going to be like in the end times, drug culture is going to be huge, huge. I mean, I, I've even studied the language of it. It's, it's, it's the drug culture. We have a drug culture that could just take right over. In my home state, Massachusetts, it's legal to you know, smoke marijuana, you know, recreational. It's coming here, Pennsylvania, too. Should we just let that happen? Just say, well, that's okay. You know, where, where are we? Where's our heads? Where's our minds? So character building is a nation. 
God is testing us individually. Are you going to stand? Are you going to, are you, you know, are you just going to sit back? Or, or, or and, and he's testing the nation. I mean, I mean, I really think that. I think, I think that if he's, you know, I don't, I'm not a Catholic in Christ. I believe in the scales, you know, you judge by the scales. But I do think that God has judged his scale. The, na the nation's on the scales right now. Where is God going to go with us? You know? He gave us everything and every opportunity. Where are we going to go with it? And so Moses says in that, that first line, that first line, he gives us long life, he gives us life, and multiply, and, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. My, 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 my folks gave up a lot to come here. Okay, they gave up everything to come here. And you did it too, I'm sure. You know, some of, you, some of us may, may have got here just maybe they had nothing behind to leave, but, but a lot of us gave, a lot of our, our forefathers gave up uh, uh, you know, farms and, 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 and a life there, trusting that, that God was going to, that this was the promised land. That's how they thought about it. This is the promised land. I'm going to go to America and God is going is to bless me and there's opportunity there. There's opportunity for my children. If I'm a shoemaker, my kids will, won't have to be a shoemaker. If they want to be, they can be a shoemaker or they can be a governor or they can be the president, you know? I mean, this is America after all. We're losing it. We have a ruling class Right now, right now, there's a ruling class, and uh, and uh, but you know who really is supposed to rule? The people. We speak, and so we God has given us this great opportunity. So Moses is saying, "Go in there and fight." God is testing our nation. How do you vote? Character matters. I don't care how pretty somebody is, or handsome somebody is, or so strong, how, how strong somebody is, and you like the strength of that person or whatever. Go for the person who has character. person you believe has character. And thou shalt remember all the way in which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to prove you and to know what was in your heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or not. Now, do you think that uh, the fact that, uh, that uh, in, some, in some places that one third of the babies are being avoided, do you think that that's something that's pleasing to God? Is, is that, and that's something that we can, that we can change, that, that we can help. Folks, we, this, this is a time when we need to, uh, to really uh, lift God uh, or, or let him lift us. And, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with, with manna, which thou knowest not. In other words, he said he blessed them. Those people, those people went, were, were, were out in the wilderness and, and God, every day he gave them all they needed. It wasn't, a, they didn't have an abundance necessarily, but they had all that they needed. God protected them took care of them for 40 years and they multiplied and they've, now they're a, great, they're a great force, you know, they're a great army. And they're about to go up against seven nations and each nation, I believe individually, is stronger than them. And they're going to go up against seven nations and they don't have the weapons that they need, they, they need metal weapons. Uh, they, they're going up, people with, going up against people with chariots. They're going up against people that have high wall. The last generation panicked when they saw all of that, right? Because they didn't have their full faith and trust in God. And Moses is saying to them, look, I can't go with you. He's 120 years old. <laughs> but I think he was probably looking pretty good right then, you know, but because God preserved him. And Caleb, how old was Caleb? 80. 80 years old anyway. And, and he's still like a young man. He's going to go and lead them. And, and well, Jacob, and he's actually going to give it to uh, Joshua. But Joshua and Caleb are, are going to uh, go in there and both, as, and have, have God has preserved them, and they're going to be leaders. Isn't it interesting? The, 
uh, Caleb is going to go and he's going to take on the Amalekites, the giants. Okay? And he's going to have victory. And, 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 and Joshua, he's going to lead all the people if they are morally ready for it. And he's going to make Israel a great nation. That's what Moses is, is telling them. All you've got to do is, first and foremost, put God on the throne and obey my commandments. I've got to ask today, uh, is God on the throne of your life? Is God, is God uh, uh, working in, in, in your heart? Is God... Uh, do you understand that God is, is not a, a distant God that just, that you have to you know, scream and cry out, God, God, listen to me, I'm over here, Ken Katamatori, I'm right here, listen to me. Listen. There's a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of religious people in different parts of the world, that's what they do, they put out flags and wave, they have prayer wheels so that the prayers can go around, they get God's attention, they do anything they can to get God's attention. They do sacrifices, sometimes they sacrifice their own children, historically that's what they've done, to try to get God's attention. This is the kind of God we have. We have a God that when you stub your toe, He cares. Right? And He tells you that if, if someone in your congregation, in your group, stubs their toe, you care. Because the success of the whole group is, is dependent upon that one. You've got to all be together. You know, you, you, you've got to care and love and, and nurture one another. And that's what God does to us. He is not a distant God. He's a, he's a personal God. He's alive in our everyday life. And right now, he's giving us the greatest opportunity. All he's saying is, guys, guys, be faithful to me. I want to bless you. Be faithful. And that's, what, that, that's all I can say about, about voting. You know? I can't tell you who to vote for. You, you have to see who is real, who has the principles, who really are the godly people. And put them in office. There's a lot of people that are already in office need to get out of office. <laughs> we need to put them out of office. You know, we need we need a lot of changes in our government. And it's all dependent upon <clears throat> you. All right, God, we thank you for this. But you know, the first thing, Lord, that you said we have to do is to know you. Perhaps there's somebody here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior. Yet you tell us that if you shall confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's what the ED is, is saved. Lord, we want that for our children. We want that for our grandchildren. And uh, Lord, I, I pray that, that if there's anybody here today that does not know Jesus, that uh, that, that person will come to know you today, right now. They'll, be, they'll decide to become a part of your people. We'll thank you and praise you for this. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.